This is a pretty well stock Dynaco Stereo 120 with a cover off. There is one small difference. You'll notice that the input jacks are nice and shiny and that's because I've replaced them and we have a kit that lets you replace them. The old ones have just gotten so grungy that the ground didn't make a good connection. So we'll turn it on and we'll measure the voltage. It's got 72.2 volts which is darn close to the nominal 72 volts. But that big capacitor over there, sometimes they will lose capacitance. And the big problem you've got is you can't get those kind of capacitors anymore. So here's the answer that we've come up with. Three of these 6800 microfarad 80 volt capacitors we can put in parallel in what I like to call the dynamite capacitor arrangement. Looks like that. And then you can substitute that capacitor in for the existing big blue old style capacitor. Now there is one thing that you have to do before you do it or else you will blow up the regulator. And that's what we're going to talk about next. The regulator over here would be perfectly happy to charge the old 3300 microfarad capacitor. However, we'd probably blow up the pass transistor while quickly charging the new arrangement of three capacitors. Because instead of just 3300 microfarads, this new arrangement has about 20,400 microfarads. So what we've got to do is make sure that the charging takes place a whole bunch more slowly. And to do that, we're going to change one of the components on the old power supply board. But first, let's see what other benefits we can get from increasing the size of the capacitors. What we'll do is connect some dummy loads. The dummy loads are hooked up to the amplifier. And we'll hook up a function generator. And as we drive the output power up, We see the clipping on the upper edge of the scope waveform. There's the clipping. And that clipping is due to the fact that the power supply voltage is sagging when the power supply has to deliver a lot of current for a long time. And that's basically owing to some current limiting that is happening on the peaks. Now you'll notice if we go up to 100 Hz, change the display a bit, that we don't have that same distortion anymore. Now, there's a little distortion in the waveform because it's kind of a oh a ragged old function generator I'm using. We can see more clearly what's going on if we look at the ripple on the power supply output voltage. Here we are on about 10 millivolts per division and we see there is some 120 Hertz ripple and on top of the 120 Hertz ripple we've got the 20 Hertz that we're putting in from the function generator. Right now our sensitivity is 10 millivolts per box. If we start to drive a lot of power we're going to see the amount of ripple go up dramatically. So let's go back to where we saw that clipping. Right now we're on about 5 volts per box. So what we see is we've got about three boxes on the scope so that says that the voltage that feeds the amplifiers is dropping by about 15 volts in the presence of the 20 Hertz full power on both channels. We're pretty close to full power. We can also see that if we increase the frequency up to about 100 Hertz, that really the ripple drops dramatically because now we've got about three boxes on one volt per box as opposed to five volts per box. And uh, that's basically because the 3300 microfarad capacitor is able to hold over much better with 100 hertz. And if we go up to about a kilohertz, we'll see, yeah, there's still some power supply ripple there. But once again, it's much smaller. So the idea is that if we go to a much larger capacitor, we can cut the ripple and let the amp deliver a whole lot more power at those rather low frequencies. We're going to remove this screw and this screw. But first, and most important, we are going to remove the plug. And here we clearly see that the plug is out. So we've got a good chance of working safely. Make sure you get the lock washer so it doesn't fall in. 
and the other screw that holds on the foot. And you'll notice these feet are actually the new feet from the FFT kit. We can take and start to lift the module out, although we'll probably find it's bound a little bit closely by some of the wires. Uh, we'll just cut this guy. Well, the next thing is these. C10 is easy to spot. It's about the only big capacitor on the power supply board itself. So, there's C10. What we've got to do is take that out and replace it with a new capacitor, a much larger value of capacitor. And that much larger value will make the voltage rise slowly enough on the initial charge that we can protect the pass transistor. We'll just undo these standoffs. And here you'll notice we probably have to pull the heat sink on the driver transistor to be able to easily get the last standoff. And after a little wrestling with the board, we've got it in a place where we can remove that capacitor. So that capacitor is now gone. We've just got to clear those two holes. And to clear those two holes, I like to use the toothpick trick. I'll show you. So for the toothpick trick, what we'll do is we'll put a toothpick in from the front while we heat the hole from the back, and that will clear the hole of solder. I'm going to form the leads to about the same width. So we can actually just compare the old and the new caps. Probably want to renew the heat sink compound over there. Best thing to do is take the old heat sink compound off with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and then put some new on. 90% stuff's a lot more effective. Now it's time to remove the big capacitor and we'll have to pull off the two wires, ground wire and the positive wire. And it's probably easier too to leave this guy disconnected. It looks like we're going to have to open up the clamp just a little bit more. Let's do that and try again. All right, and we're all set. Now, let's see if we can rotate it a little bit. We can. but not crazy and those caps are certainly not going to go any place we'll be hooking up the wires next and you'll notice everything is back in place we just have to put the screws back in to hold the module make sure you reconnect any wires that you've taken off like the main filter <laughs> 